Craig the sign guy. Why is he called Craig the sign guy? Because when Emperor Obama got elected, he said, I am not very happy with what's going on. I need to get active. And we didn't have an East Metro Tea Party at that time. So his activism was to put the biggest sign possible right on his property on the very far edge of Woodbury. In fact, it's, I almost want to bow hunt in your land. It doesn't even seem like it's the city. City officials came by and said, sir, your sign is too big. You must take it down. It has to be these dimensions. Being the good citizen he is, he complied with the local ordinance. And ever since then, he has had a sign every week that Barack Obama's been president, and I don't see him stopping in the next three years. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig the Sign Guy. Sign 199. Say, before I get to my signs, I want to uh, bring something to your attention. There's a lot of angry people in here, uh, but Minnesota ice fishermen are pissed off too. <laughs> And I don't know if you knew this, about 15 years ago, the Minnesota government cracked down on a ring of prostitutes on Lake Mille Lacs. And it was all shut down and they uh, repented their sins. But this year, the federal government is after Minnesota ice fishermen. And someone had the bright idea to deliver six packs of beer by drones. And, and what it was is you phone in on your cell phone uh, into this, it was one of the breweries, I think, and, uh, and you give them your credit card number and you give it the GPS coordinates of where you wanted the drone to land. And they thought they were within the law. It, they all flew below 400 feet, which is the FAA uh, regulation, but they were shut down because the law only allows recreational use and was ruled that beer runs to Minnesota fishermen are a commercial operation and therefore illegal. So they've been sh shut down, but they're not shut down for good. They are trying to collect 100,000 signatures which will require a presidential review of Minnesota beer runs for Minnesota ice fishermen. Now they don't have a lot of lobbying support and uh, you know a lot of lobbying resources you know they probably only have like bait to you know exchange for a, a, a political action but if anybody's interested in that or if anybody's interested in digging deeper on this one uh, I'd sure be happy to sign that that petition so Jake gave the background about the signs I'm on 199. Uh, Janice has a sign-up sheet there. Janice, if you'll send that around if you want to get on the email list. Uh, and to start the new year, I started with this sign. The IRS is down your doctor. Since school sample by April 15th. Now this is like a conceptual exercise. I don't want you to you know, necessarily send school, school samples to the White House or to the IRS. But you can think about it. So you might ask, well, how did we ever get that the IRS is our doctors? So the Supreme Court ruled in June of 2012, and the government made this argument about the Commerce Clause, and Roberts rejected the Commerce Clause, stating, well, the government's argument is if we can regulate what citizens do, we should be able to regulate what they don't do, like don't buy insurance. And, Co and Robert says, we're not falling for that. And quote, he said, the framers knew the difference between doing something and doing nothing. And he rejected the Commerce Clause. Um, but even though the, the government argued this is not a tax, they ruled that it is a tax, it will be enforced by the IRS, and the IRS requested a 9% increase in their budget and 6,700 new agents to implement <coughs> Obamacare. So I don't know about you, but you know, like when you go to the dentist and they ask about your primary doctor, I've been putting President Obama <laughs> is my primary primary doctor and nurse practitioner of the IRS. 
<laughs> and you can send samples to anybody you like. Uh, the next one. So we had one day of warm weather uh, in January when Janice and I got our grandkids out to make a snowman. And I says, we should make the snowman upside down, standing on its head. Well, why should we do that, Grandpa? It's because that's where our government is. <laughs> and I, I don't know if, uh, if you knew this, in, in 1781, when the British surrendered to the Americans and to the French at Yorktown, the British came out and their band played The World Turned Upside Down. And that could have been our national anthem over the last uh, five years. So this sign says, Obama's America create jobs by unemployment payments. And this is the craziest idea I've ever heard, that you can create jobs by having people not have jobs. But it made sense to Nancy Pelosi. She said, unemployment benefits create jobs faster than almost any other initiative you can name. She's a pretty smart lady. John Maynard Keynes would be proud of her. Barack Obama said, quote, voting for unemployment insurance helps people and creates jobs, unquote. What Reid proposed then, um, and I know they're still arguing about this, but he proposed to add 31 weeks on top of the 26 weeks provided by the states. It's benefits for 1.3 million people at a cost of $18 billion. And I think I mentioned this in one of my previous speeches, but if you compare $18 billion and 1.3 million, pe million people to Walmart, Walmart has 2 million employees, and their total profit they create with 2 million employees is 17 billion in profit. So the bottom line is we're gonna wipe out all the, the profit from 2 million people and give that profit to 1.3 million people to do nothing. So if you want an analogy, there it is. Uh, the, the next slide. So the Heritage Foundation came out with their Luke Skywalker study. Feel the force, Luke. Um, and this is a different kind of force. It's not for good, but it's for evil. And, and we're fighting like Luke fighted, uh, fought against the, uh, the Death Star. So in this study, this is a Heritage Foundation study of economic freedom. And since Barack Obama has been president, we have declined from number six to number 12 in economic freedom. So ahead of us is Estonia, <laughs> Meridius, I think that's how you pronounce it, it's a French island in the Indian Ocean. It's the home of where the dodo bird once lived. <laughs> They're superior to us now. <laughs> in Chile, where they had Pinochet, you know, about 15 years ago, the dictator. There was hyperinflation in Chile. Uh, a friend of mine used to be a uh, managing director of the company I was from. And uh, in Chile, they used to have a currency runner that went twice a day to exchange the currency. The, the, the inflation was, was that fast to turn it back into the United States dollars. So number one is Hong Kong. And I want to read you the tax policy and some of the positions of Hong Kong and just imagine if the United States had the economic positions of Hong Kong. So Hong Kong um, has no sales tax. They have no value-added tax, so VAT tax like, uh, like in Europe. There's no capital gains tax. There's no tax on interest. There's no tax on, on earnings outside of Hong Kong. There's no import tax. There's no export tax or duties. And the top income tax, the very <coughs> top bracket, is 15%. So think what America would be like if we had, a, we had an economic policy like that. I mean, job creation wouldn't, we'd be crying for, for people to fill jobs. 
So the next slide. I have my little happy face there with the, the little, little mustache. So this actually was before Barack Obama gave his speech. State of the Union accelerating to socialism or fascism, pick two. And I know my, uh, my email got a little bit long. In this. So the State of the Union, it's terrible. Um, let me just talk briefly about this. So, you know, the difference between communism and socialism, and, and it's both where the, the state or the government owns the means of production. The only difference is one is done by force and the other is done by vote. So if you look at our government, so the actual ownership, so yeah, the government owns the post office, they own Amtrak, we owned uh, GM for a while, It'll be interesting to see how Obamacare evolves, if it evolves to complete socialization of, uh, of medicine. Um, so I would say socialism, little check. But I would say, uh, just a side note on this. So um, Obamacare is 15% of the GDP. So if you take a look at 15% of our GDP, it's about $2.6 trillion. So you think about the takeover of 2.6 trillion, that's equivalent to the GDP of the United Kingdom or the GDP of France. So could you imagine our government saying, we're gonna run the United Kingdom or we're gonna run France through a government-sponsored <coughs> website? That's how immense this thing is. So the other check that you could put on this, and I think this is a big check, it's the direction of fascism, and I know the word makes people really squeamish. They think of, uh, you know, uh, not, uh, Adolf Hitler and Nazi Germany, but this is this is more a friendly fascism. And there's actually a book I think called Liberal Fascism that is really really excellent. But if you think of what fascism is, fascism is is government controlled private property. So private companies still own the means of production, but it's controlled by taxes and regulation. And I think that's the direction that we're headed. Uh, the very last line, I think, and Dave referred to this. Barack, if you're the king, are we now serfs, chattel, or peons? <laughs> So after his, uh, his speech, it was, uh, the caption was 2014, year of action. It really should have been 2014, the year of executive action, to be more precise. And we are becoming a government of men and not laws, where might makes right. Uh, and the battle is really, who has the biggest pressure group? Who has the biggest lobby group? Uh, who has the biggest political power? Where did, how is this money divided up? Banks. <laughs> Banks? <laughs> By the way, Dan sells silver back there. If anybody wants to buy silver. So if, if Obama is king, are we the surf, shadow, or peons? The one thing, and I don't know if, if you've heard this in his speech, the one thing I don't want to be is a folk. He gives speeches where there's folk and folks, and, and it's in his speeches like 20 or 30 times. And if I have to vote for one, I would rather be a peon because it's a lot more descriptive and a lot more honest than I'd be a folk. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's Craig the Sign Guy. Every It's moved to Monday, I think, now, but it used to be Sunday nights. You're sending out your email with uh, the weekly sign, the otherwise... Super Bowl, oh, Super Bowl, because it's Super Bowl, okay. Uh, so that's his email address, he, you can send an email to him there, otherwise if Janice, you have the sheet going around, sign up, they're really funny.